Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to this year's Fall Brunch. My name is Lamar Braithwaite, and I'm one of the co-chairs of the brunch. And before we get started, I want to thank our amazing sponsors for their support of today's event. For a third year in a row, we're grateful to Facebook for being our presenting sponsor of this event. We also want to thank our platinum sponsor, RJ Wife Event Production. Our goal sponsors, Verizon, Ben Carver, Neil Starkey, Rob Cagorno, and Jeff Nelson. Our silver sponsors, Lidos, Guidehouse, Metro Weekly, Tag Magazine, Ballast Research, Bank of America, Joe Gale, Doug Armstrong, Steve Dobrowski, Elizabeth Nadeau, Mark Rifkind, and Jocko Maid. Our bronze sponsors, HRC, Gail and Michael Gottlieb, and Tito's Vodka. Now I'd love to welcome my other co-chairs, Kelly Lasko and Devon Trotter. Hey, Lamar. Good to see hey. you. Hi, Hi, Kelly. Hi, guys. Hi. Good to see the both of you. And, you know, so excited that our run is finally here. You know, each year we are able to come together to support LGBTQ youth and ensure they have the resources they need to thrive. Me too. I am so excited for today. I am especially looking forward to hearing from our SMILE youth today, as that is always my favorite part of every brunch. Today is also National Coming Out Day, so it is a great day for us to celebrate the strength it takes for many of our youth to be their authentic selves. It is definitely a day to celebrate, and we have a great program lined up for you. We're so thankful for everyone who came together to make this brunch possible. In addition to our generous sponsors, we want to thank our amazing brunch committee, our fabulous brunch ambassadors who raised more than $20,000 from their networks, our generous individual sponsors, and all of you for joining us today. Our goal today is to raise as much money as possible to support LGBTQ youth. So at any time, you can donate or bid on auction items by texting SMILE to 243-725. That smile to 243-725. I am sure that many of you are enjoying your brunch in a box um, that was created by SMILE board member Jocko Fajardo of Jocko Made. So thank you, Jocko, for all of your help in creating these fabulous brunches and for years of your support of the LGBTQ youth. We are also grateful for the support from our generous um, auction donors. Kelly, did you say auction? I sure did. Um, and we have a number of great items for individuals to bid on this year. To bid on auction items or to make a donation, all you need to do is text SMILE to 243-725, SMILE, S-M-Y-A-L, to 243-725. We sure do have some great items this year, including virtual cocktails with Alan Cumming, Tony Winners, Judith Light, and Celia Keenan Bolger, and Jake Shears of the Scissor Sisters. We also have baking and floral classes by Jocko Fajardo, a bat signed by Juan Soto of the Nationals, and a fabulous staycation in a monument view suite at the Lion Hotel. And we also know that y'all love brunch, so we have some great brunches lined up at the one and only Duplex Diner, and also a great brunch experience at Shaw's Tavern, among with a few other items. Um, one that's near and dear to my heart is the Outside the Line pet photography, which right behind me, it's the lovely Eloise, but you can also bid on all of those items plus many more. Um, the auction closes at 5 p.m. tomorrow, so be sure to place your bids now. Yeah, and as Lamar said earlier, we are grateful for Facebook's generous support as presenting sponsor for the past three years. We now have a special message from Monique Dorsonville from Facebook. My name is Monique Dorsonville and I lead Progressive Partnerships and Engagement at Facebook and I am so pleased to be here with you today. Facebook is proud to be the presenting sponsor of Smiles Fall Brunch for the third year in a row to ensure that LGBTQ youth have the support they need to thrive. From Smiles Housing Program for Homeless Youth to their Leadership Development Programming, we are grateful for the impact that the organization has on LGBTQ youth in the area especially today on National Coming Out Day. We recognize the importance of celebrating the perseverance and strength that it takes for young people to be their authentic selves. As a Black queer woman, I can speak to this firsthand as I developed personal and professional confidence over time. 
Heck, I am still working on it. I believe strongly that Smile's work to provide safe spaces and support for youth is critical now more than ever. At Facebook, we are proud to be a partner in this effort. Thank you for joining us today at The Brunch, and we hope you have an incredible time. Thank you so much, Monique, and Facebook uh, for your support of this event. We are also very excited to welcome back NBC4 anchor Aaron Gilcrest as our MC for today's event. Thank you. Have a great brunch, everyone. Guys have a great brunch. Enjoy. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Smile's 23rd annual Fall Brunch. Thank you, Lamar, Kelly, Devon, for that introduction. And really for all the hard work that you and the brunch committee have put into this year's virtual event. Uh, I'm really excited to join you again this year as your MC to celebrate another year of supporting LGBTQ youth. Uh, I'm grateful, really, that we could all come together to recognize the achievements that these young people have made in the past year. Uh, as our brunch committee chairs just mentioned, it is easy to make a donation or to bid on auction items. Uh, all you have to do is text SMILE to 243725. You can enter your credit card information there. Uh, again, I, I appreciate everybody coming together to help support our young people this year. Uh, as a news person, as an anchor at NBC4, I see so many stories about the things that young people are doing, amazing things they're being able to accomplish, even in this current strange environment that we're in. And so I know it's important for us to come together to support their work, to support their development. Uh, I remember when, when I was in high school, when I was growing up, there was an organization like Smile down in Richmond uh, that's still there, and it was really important then and so much more important now that there's an organization like Smile that's there to provide safe, welcoming programs for young people, programs that are more important, even more important these days, given the environment that we're in. And so your support to make this work possible uh, is really valuable. And I thank you for joining us today uh, to work with SMILE. Uh, SMILE's work in the community supporting and mentoring LGBTQ youth over the last 36 years has really impacted tens of thousands of lives. This year, it's been challenging for the youth that SMILE works with every single day. A lot of youth have had to stay at home in unwelcoming environments. Others have lost jobs or have struggled to find stable housing. And I think SMILE you know, really recognized these challenges very quickly and implemented uh, new virtual drop-in and leadership development programs, launched a COVID-19 relief fund to provide direct cash assistance to more than 130 young people who are homeless or at risk of homelessness and continue to provide life-saving uh, programming to 26 young people in the housing program that SMILE offers. Today, you're gonna hear from incredible advocates for this work. You're gonna be introduced to some young LGBTQ leaders who are making a difference in their community right now. We are gonna have an amazing time virtually to support uh, our young people and to support SMILE. It's my pleasure now to introduce Rob Corgorno, the chair of SMILE's Board of Directors. Thank you, Aaron, so much for joining us once again this year as MC of our Fall Brunch. On behalf of the SMILE Board of Directors, it is my pleasure to welcome everyone to this year's Fall Brunch. I am grateful that all of you could join us. I am truly inspired by the youth we serve and the staff who serve them now more than ever in this virtual environment. Our organization is in great hands under the leadership of our executive director, Sultan Shaker. I also want to thank our wonderful brunch chairs, Lamar Braithwaite, Kelly Lasko, and Devon Trotter, and the entire brunch committee for your leadership of this event. I also want to thank my fellow members of the board of directors for their tireless work on the brunch and throughout the year. It is truly an honor and privilege to serve with them. Finally, I wanna thank our generous major donors who provide significant resources that allow SMILE to meet the needs of LGBTQ youth. Because we had to eliminate in-person events, the support of our major donors is more important now than ever. If you aren't already a major donor, I hope that you will join our major donor club today with a donation of $1,000 or higher using your smartphone. All you need to do is text SMILE to 
723-725, smile to 243-725, and then click Donate Now. If you are able to join at the $10,000 level, you will be recognized as a founding circle member in perpetuity. We hope that you can join our major donor club this year so we can further expand our programming. It is now my pleasure to present the Todd Peterson Award for her work with SMILE and LGBTQ youth to Evone Bell, founder and editor-in-chief of TAG Magazine, a central source for lesbian and queer culture news and events. This year, TAG Magazine celebrates eight years of telling thousands of stories, creating safe spaces for queer women, and providing important resources for the LGBTQ community. Four years ago, Ebene founded the TAG Scholarship Fund, a scholarship created specifically for young queer women of color who can't afford to attend school. After realizing that only 23% of Black LGBTQ college students graduate, she wanted to make a difference within marginalized communities. I am so happy to recognize Ebene with this, this year's Todd Peterson Award. Congratulations, Ebene, and thank you for all that you are doing. I hope that you all have a wonderful brunch, and may we see each other in person next year. Happy Smile Brunch, and thank you so much for honoring me with the Todd Peterson Award. This is a true honor, not just because it's an award for the mantle, but because it's coming from such a great organization like SMILE. I appreciate the work that you see that I do within our community, but please know we see the work that you are doing for our LGBTQ youth in our community. So please know you have a supporter for life. I appreciate the work that you're doing, and I truly, truly appreciate this award. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. Congratulations, Ebene, on your much-deserved award there. Uh, it's my pleasure now to introduce three individuals who work day in and day out to ensure that LGBTQ youth have the programming and the support that they really need to thrive. Please welcome Executive Director Sultan Shakir, Director of Housing and Clinical Services Jorge Mimbreño, and Program Director Adalfi Johnson to tell you more about SMILE's work this year. Thank you, Aaron. It's really great to have you joining us for another year for the Small Fall Brunch. I also want to thank our brunch ambassadors, our brunch committee, our board, our staff, our volunteers, and of course, the amazing youth, the people that we do this work for every day. So my name is Sultan Shakran. I'm the executive director of Small. I'll also be joined by our director of housing and clinical services, Jorge Membreno, and our amazing programs director, Adolfi Johnson, to talk a little bit more about the work that we do here at Small. And so for the past 36 years, SMILE has worked to support and empower young people in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. And with everything being virtual, it's increasingly national. We've had youth from around the country come to our Rise Up Activist Camp. We've had youth reach out to resources about how they can access mental health supports. And we could not do that work without your support. And so while things are virtual this year, we're still doing the deep dive to make sure that we're supporting young people, meeting their needs and helping to develop young leaders. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Jorge to talk more about his work. Thank you, Sultan, very much. Uh, I'm the Director of Youth Housing and Clinical Services. And in that capacity, I get to work with our 26 youth at our two youth houses. Now we've had to do a lot of adapting within this pandemic uh, and that meant moving through phases just like we've done here in DC. So for us, phase one was all about the basics. It was all about making sure our youth had access to all the food benefits they needed, making sure that they had access to cleaning supplies and PPEs. And then from there, moving into phase two. And phase two was all about just benefits and making sure that our youth could access pandemic unemployment assistance, unemployment insurance, and our COVID relief fund. Our COVID relief fund has supported youth in our programs and outside of our programs. That means any youth who were at risk of experiencing homelessness, experiencing homelessness, were able to receive a direct cash benefit, uh, which has supported them paying for phone bills, uh, rent, utilities, food, anything and everything they needed so that they wouldn't be experiencing homelessness and can receive some more support. And that has also led to a pathway of other referral services that we've been able to provide. Now, phase three has been trickier, right? It's all about adapting. 
you know, that the mental health work has changed. We live right now in what feels like a global, not just pandemic, but a global trauma for a lot of our youth. And so the mental health work has become a little more intensive. And we know that the employment piece as well, the employment piece has had to change and the way we think about paths to independence has changed. So traditionally, you know, we could fit our youth into a model of where they are getting employment and being able to save, but what if, you know, what if some of those things are limited? You know, we move from opportunities to choices to prosperity, but all of a sudden the opportunities and the choices are going away and have started to come back a little bit, but just not enough. So we've had to think about that differently. We're thinking about entrepreneurship programs. To give you an example, one of our youth was able to take her bartending license that she got right before the pandemic and create it into her own business because that was the path that she found as success for her. And so we're thinking about that for the rest of our youth of what ideas can you turn from an idea into an action into prosperity for you. And so that's the way that we have continued to operate at Smile. We give much because much is needed and I'm just so incredibly like proud of our very dedicated staff. And for us, we've been at work uh, and in the work. The work hasn't changed. Just We wear masks now, but we will continue to be here. So I just want to thank all of you for your support and for helping create opportunities for our youth because we know that we couldn't do it without you. And with that, I'd like to introduce our powerhouse of a director of programs, Adelphi Johnson. Thank you, Jorge, for such a warm introduction. Smile has always been committed to supporting queer and trans youth. And even during these critical times, it is even more important that we continue the work that we have started to support our young people. That is one of the reasons why we moved all of our programs to a virtual platform. Trainings, drop-in center programs, and even Rise Up, which formerly was our activist camp. We had the opportunity to engage over 75 youth, not just from the DMV, but all across the nation in supporting young people and being able to expand their advocacy skills and organizing in their communities. But guess what? It did not stop there. Additionally, we expanded our Little Smiles program and we now meet bi-weekly to really engage and support our young people under the age of 13. Smile is continuing to do the work and it's because of persons like you that we're able to do this work. This year, we were able to provide our 35th Youth Leadership Awardee with support as they're continuing their education. These awards are critical, especially during these times when we need to ensure that our young people are supported in their leadership and their advocacy efforts. In times like these, now more than ever, we have to ensure that we are supporting our youth so that they can not only be the change for tomorrow, but that they can be the change for today. Why don't you take some time to hear from Hannah, Max, and Nathan. Hi, my name is uh, Nathan. My pronouns are they and them. I currently go to school at George Mason University. I am a psychology major and I'm hoping after school to go into private practice uh, specifically with LGBT youth to kind of help people that are going through similar stuff that I went through as a kid. Hi, my name is Max. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. I am currently going to school at Frostburg State University. I just started my sophomore year. And since I got here, I have picked up a double major in quantitative economics and geography with a minor in sustainability studies. Long term, and this is a long shot, I would love to be chair of the Federal Reserve, but most likely in the meantime, I'm gonna end up doing uh, regional data analytics uh, for a private firm, just in the financial field somewhere. I am Hannah, I use she, her pronouns. I am a sophomore at UNC Chapel Hill and I'll be applying to the School of Public Health, um, hoping to major in health policy and management. After school, um, I'm considering Going to med school, I'd love to work somewhere that can help uh, ensure access and health equity and combine kind of my passion for medicine and social justice. When I received the award, it was a lot of validation for a lot of the work that I put in. So to kind of have a little bit of validation for that was really nice to kind of see that like 
the work that I do doesn't go unnoticed. Um, and also, like, just, you know, the monetary aspect just, like, helps kind of ease your mind. Receiving the Youth Leadership Award back when I was in high school was a huge reward for doing just about the least rewarding job ever. I was the president of my school's GSA, and doing that in a reasonably conservative region was a really thankless job sometimes. So receiving the, the award was like a nice reminder that what I was doing really mattered and motivated me to just keep pushing. For me, receiving the Youth Leadership Award was a really amazing recognition of the four years that I had dedicated to my school's GSA, three as the president. The perfect ending to everything that I had done and been a part of in high school, advocating for queer youth in my school system. So it was just a huge accomplishment for me to kind of have um, all of my hard work throughout high school, mistakes and all, be recognized in that way. Smile's impact on my leadership, I would say, to teach me like how to organize things, how to outline things, and how to effectively kind of go one, two, three, and to kind of get stuff done. I didn't really have any friends, much less LGBTQ friends, um, and I kind of felt very isolated. So having a place that I could go to to just hang out during programs and that I could explore um, my sexuality and my gender identity. I mean, I don't think I could have found out I was non-binary without Smile's help. I, I don't think that I would have half of the friends that I do now without Smile. Hey, thank you, Max, Hannah, and Nathan for being here today. We look forward to seeing what you guys are able to do in the future. We do have a special message now from Academy Award winning screenwriter and recent parent, Dustin Lance Black. Hey there. It's Dustin Lance Black, and I'm honored to be a part of your fall brunch as we celebrate another year of SMILE, supporting and empowering LGBTQ youth. As we all know, this year has been challenging for the entire world, and that is especially true for LGBTQ youth. So that's why it's so important for organizations like SMILE to be there, to provide the support that our youth need in these incredibly trying times. As I've learned more about SMILE's programs, I was inspired by the breadth of the services and programming that they're able to offer to youth who all too frequently have nowhere else to go. Your support today can ensure that LGBTQ youth have this life-saving programming for years to come. You know, a little over two years ago, my husband Tom and I welcomed our son into the world. And it's been an eye-opening experience. And it is our mission in life to ensure that he will grow up in an environment where his individuality, his differences, and his dreams are embraced. In the queer community, many youth never have a place where they're able to receive that kind of support. When I learned about the Little Smiles program for youth ages 6 through 12, it touched my heart to see that our youngest in the LGBTQ community have a safe space to be their authentic selves. I can't imagine how such an embrace may have changed my own childhood and my very life. Every young person deserves to feel inspired and celebrated. And that is why Smile is such a critical organization. With today being National Coming Out Day, it's also a time for us to celebrate our diversity and authentic selves while remembering what it was like to be young. And for many of us to be afraid and ashamed to be our true selves. When I was younger for a while, being myself was just not an option. Growing up in a Mormon household, the feelings that I had were absolutely not encouraged nor celebrated, they were actively derided and led me to hold on to shame for who I truly was. I do not want any other young person coming into who they are today to ever feel what I felt. And so not only is it important to advocate for LGBTQ rights, but also to support organizations like SMILE that support LGBTQ youth 
and assist them in finding community, having access to affirming spaces, and building peer support. Your dedication will ensure that SMILE can support and empower the next generation of LGBTQ youth. So thank you for all that you do to make the world a better place for our youth. Thank you, Dustin, for joining us today. Uh, two years ago, SMILE received requests from parents, teachers, and social workers to provide programming for youth ages 6 to 12. Now, before that, most of the engagement of LGBTQ youth that age was purely medical. But if you were a young person looking to make friends where you could use your preferred pronouns without being worried about being made fun of, or maybe you just wanted to be around other kids who were obsessed with unicorns, there just wasn't a place to go. And that was the founding of Little Smiles. This year, we've been able to expand that program to now meet twice a month, and we've come up with new virtual experiences for young people in that program. Earlier this month, Taylor and Griffin from Little Smiles were able to have a fun conversation with two drag queens from the DuPont Social Club, Wanna See More and La Vida Dolce. Smile is really grateful for the long-standing support that it's received from the DuPont Social Club that hosts the annual Miss Adams Morgan pageant, and I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Hello, hello, I'm Juana Seymour, and I'm so, so honored to be um, a part of like an interview with Two Little Smiles. And I'm Levita Dolce. I am very honored as well uh, to be able to talk to these two fabulous little smiles, Taylor and Griffin. We have some questions to ask you because we just want to get to know you. And actually, Griffin, I love that unicorn on your left side. Tell me, can you want to tell me? A little, uh, I can actually, left and right. <laughs> I basically, my whole room has unicorns on it. So. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I have unicorn curtains here, I have a unicorn poster, unicorn bed sheets, a bunch of unicorn stuffed animals. <laughs> I've always really liked unicorns. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I love Barbie, and believe me, I don't even know what the love from Barbie became, but I love them. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Hello Kitty. Um, obsessed. Boom. She is. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's my thing. And I want to ask um, a little bit about you. So, uh, what did you like coming to Little Smiles? The reason I like coming to Little Smiles is because, um, uh, I really like like being there and like the environment and like I can be with uh, my friends and people like me. I like going to Little Smiles because it's just really fun to have a lot of people who are like me in the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. I usually like like being able to see some of my friends. The, the best thing about going there for me is when we went in person, there was this big beanbag that I always liked. <laughs> I'd love to know, like, how do you all feel after Little Smiles? Like, what sort of feelings do you take with you once you've been? At the end of Little Smiles, I'm sad because it's over, but I'm also happy that it happened. And it's always, and like, I get to look forward to coming later kind of feel sad because it's over too yeah when virtual little smiles happen it gets twice a month one right uh so i'm like oh yay it's gonna happen again quicker so do you oh. are okay with this virtual life that we are living now or do you miss that interaction with your friends on school one-on-one -on -one and it's kind of hard like i want coronavirus to go away but i also like that you don't have to do as much work <laughs> so i have a question um of course what is your favorite drag queen outfit <laughs> wow i have so many good ones and so many bad ones you create a persona and you create a drag character and um it depends how you feel that day. Some days you feel like big hair, some days you feel like bigger hair. 
it is nice to be able to change things up as you see fit or as your moods go. You know, me, I'm partial to like an animal prince, but now onto the hard hitting question. What is your favorite game or toy right now? <laughs> I, I have three. <laughs> I have Legos, Magic the Gathering, and my bike. Okay, smart, it's good. Well, how about you, Griffin? Um, I really like Minecraft. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I also really like the Creative World dolls. Those are really fun. Okay. It was an honor to meet Taylor and Griffin um, from Smile Youth and just have a wonderful, lovely conversation with them. Happy, happy, happy to talk to both of you. Very, very excited. The brunch is one of my favorite events of the year. And so it's great to be part of this and, and meet two fabulous young people. Thank you to Taylor, Griffin, Juana, and Levita for that fun conversation. So glad that Little Smiles is there for these young people. Uh, it's my pleasure now to introduce our next two guests who are generous supporters of Smile and strong allies of the LGBTQ community. Please welcome Washington Nationals pitcher Sean Doolittle and his wife and Smile board member Erin Dolan. Thank you, Erin. We're excited to be here. And thank you to everyone for tuning in from home and continuing to support Smile by attending our first ever virtual fall brunch. I'm Erin Dolan, board member at Smile. And I'm Sean Doolittle, pitcher for the still defending World Series champion, Washington Nationals. When Sean was first traded to DC, the Washington Nationals recommended that we visit Smile and meet with some of the folks carrying out Smile's mission to support LGBTQ young people in the DC metro area. So we paid a couple of visits to meet the team at Smiles Community Center, as well as some of the young people living in their new housing program. We were so impressed with Smile after talking with many of these young people and hearing their stories about how they credited Smile's broad range of programming for helping them become leaders in the DC community. Since then, Aaron has joined the board of directors and has been able to see firsthand how Smile turns your donations into state-of-the-art wraparound programming that supports all the needs of LGBTQ young people right here in the DC metro area. In July, SMILE hosted its largest youth leadership conference to date, Rise Up, a national conference for queer and trans youth organizers. When SMILE shifted programs to virtual spaces earlier this year, we made the decision early on to turn our annual activist camp, typically hosted in person, into a virtual conference aimed at a national youth audience, and we had more than 75 attendees. Now, you will hear from staff members and youth who participated in the conference and following their video, we have a special message to LGBTQ youth from MSNBC anchor, Joshua Johnson. As always, we're proud to stand with SMILE, we're proud to work with SMILE, and we're proud to support SMILE. We hope you can find a way to donate today so you can support SMILE too. Rise Up Conference was our first year doing a national conference, um, and it was a national week-long conference for LGBTQ youth organizers. Um, it was really based off of previous programs we've done locally, um, activist camps specifically, which would be two or three days um, overnight camp for LGBTQ youth organizers. But this year, because of the pandemic, um, naturally we had to make it virtual, and because it was virtual, we decided to make it national as well. Um, and this allowed youth from all over the country, from all of the, over the world to access um, the conference's programming. So we held workshops, we had informal chat spaces for youth to find community, we had support spaces, um, we had discussion spaces, we had all different kinds of things. We also had art spaces as well. Um, and we really were just trying to support LGBTQ youth in their own organizing efforts, in their own communities that they were already doing. My name is Sanjana Call, and I use he pray pronouns. My name's Suga. I use she, they pronouns. I've had the opportunity to be in a lot of leadership roles at school. Um, I'm also currently the president of my school, Gender and Sexuality Alliance. Now, I'm currently um, one of the administrators of our online school newspaper. Um, I did rise up and almost every day, most of the day for a week, we were having these really deep 
conversations about activism and about the the need for activism i was learning so much information that i had never even heard of so interesting and so fascinating to learn about activism and social justice in such a serious and scholarly context i saw um a thing for this i was really excited about it and i figured i don't know i've never done something like this before and i was wondering what i could learn from it and I was really excited because I ended up learning a lot more than I expected I would. And I thought it was extremely interesting. Um, I think my favorite part of the Rise Up conference was being facilitated too and facilitating the chats, um, the chat spaces on Zoom and just seeing how much they already knew, how much the youth already knew and like the, the dialogue they had between each other. It was very, it was always respectful, intellectual, like, bright and it was very inspiring to see. Youth are more energized and engaged than they've been in a little while to create change in their own communities. So we really want to make sure we're supporting those efforts because this is a moment of a lot of collective energy. And we want to be able to harness that energy towards creating justice for the most marginalized people among us. Hey there, it's Joshua Johnson from NBC News and MSNBC. Thank you for letting me be a part of this fall brunch. They asked me if I'd give you a little bit of advice, and I'm happy to do that. But let me just say, first of all, I'm not going to pretend to know you or your life, right? So I don't necessarily know what you need, but I will tell you what I needed when I was your age, and maybe it'll be helpful to you too. You know, I'm getting ready to launch this program on MSNBC for the first time. I'm going to have a television program and able to put something out there into the world that really speaks from my mind and my heart. It's the kind of thing that I always believed I could do, even though I didn't see a whole lot of people like me on television when I was coming up. Not black men. There were plenty of black men in broadcast journalism. Bernard Shaw at CNN, Ed Bradley at 60 Minutes, Lester Holt at NBC. But black gay men, I didn't see a whole lot of. There were a few, but it was the typical kind of stereotypical characters that you can probably guess were on TV. So at a certain point, I made peace with my desire to be in broadcasting. I've loved radio and television since I was five. I basically made the decision to do this professionally when I was 10. I'm 40 now. So I've basically been running toward the same dream for 30 years. Finally got here. It was worth the wait and worth the work. But before I settled on broadcasting for real, while I was still in college, I had a tough decision to make. I wasn't sure whether I could be out and be in the public eye as a broadcast journalist. I just wasn't sure those two things could coexist. And I finally came to the realization that I had two and only two options. I realized that I could not build a career telling the truth as a journalist about everyone else's life and lying about my own. I can't do it. Now, some people need to remain closeted and to keep their sexual orientation or their gender identity private for their safety. But I was living in South Florida. I was in Fort Lauderdale, a very safe place to be gay. So my two choices, I could either not be gay or I could own my sexuality fully so that no one could use it against me as a weapon and then just go forward and live my life. Now, this has been very hard to do. In some ways, I'm still learning. But the beauty of it was that when I made this second choice, I actually became a better journalist. I had to deal with the vulnerable spots in me, and so it made me sensitive to the vulnerabilities in other people. I needed empathy, and so it helped me empathize with others. And as a result, it made me a better interviewer. It's partly how I got here. It's very unfair that the things that you need to succeed, you're not necessarily gonna get because of your sexuality or your gender orientation. And it shouldn't be that way. But there is a way to attract those things to you. Give what you need. If you need empathy, empathize with others. If you need a world that is more just, then practice justice. Do what's right. And what's right is not always what's easy. If you want to be able to just be yourself, you have to let others be themselves even if you don't like what it is that they are. You don't have to like it. It's not about them. 
It's not even about you. It's about us being able to build the kind of world that we need. Again, like I said, I'm not going to presume that I know what you need to be successful, but this has helped me succeed. It's helped me live out a childhood dream. The dream of a child who never could have known what it meant to be gay. But at the end of the day, only really needed to know what it meant to be human. Your humanity is more than enough. Let that guide you. And you can't lose. I wish you all the best. Thanks. Hey, Joshua, thank you for joining us today. I'm really honored to be able to call Joshua, a colleague in the NBC family. Uh, we all know that we are here because this is a fundraiser. And we also know that we're here because young, queer, and trans people face significant hurdles in their daily lives. We also know that because of your support, SMILE helps young people overcome these hurdles, including not having a place to sleep at night. SMILE runs the largest transitional housing program in the DMV or Delaware, or for that matter, anywhere else along the East Coast, with the exception of New York City. Now, SMILE's housing program is more than just housing. It's about love, care, case management, community, life skills, support, and family that can only be created because of your support. Next, you're going to hear from youth who are currently benefiting from this program that SMILE works with 24 hours a day, seven days a week. My name is Sam. Uh, I use they them pronouns. My name is Harmony Giovanni. Uh, my pronouns are she and he. I found SMILE through the COVID relief fund and my living situation at the time was pretty unstable. Joined the SMILE program last year. In my family, there is mental health challenges there. In that process of some of my family members going through a mental health crisis, uh, they relocated. And when they relocated, unfortunately, I was no longer able to provide a space of living for myself. Uh, due to my transition, I wasn't also able to really maintain the economic stability in my career. I say I was a tree without roots, if that makes sense. Mental health wise, I was like not in a good place. And I had just gotten out of the hospital when I ended up on the streets again. I just needed to find real support and I needed to find it quickly. I needed to find a place where I could really rest my head and my mind. I really he came in with a lot of anxiety, a lot of anxiety. Financial stress of being unemployed and also not really knowing next month where I am going to be sleeping at night and where my cat's going to end up was super, super stressful. And so now it's, you know, a lot easier for me to put money away every paycheck because I don't have the threat of like getting kicked out or evicted from my apartment. I have, you know, that extra cushion of money that I can save and put towards, you know, after I'm out of this program, I'm going to want to be financially independent. And that's like my whole goal while being here. Smile gave me that awesome opportunity to put my feet in the ground uh, by providing a living space for me and helping me to deal with some financial things. So when I transition beyond Smile, I'll have some savings, I'll have some a higher credit score. I felt really welcomed by both of my roommates. The apartment is really, really nice. My cat is so well taken care of here as well. And like, we feel really comfortable and at home here. Working on my mental health has been my, my main priority over the course of this year. So I've been having a lot of little successes in that. Always checking up on you and making sure that you're on the right track. It's kind of like having like an older sibling just like keeping you on the right path but also like providing you with every resource possible that they have at their disposal it really kind of sets a standard for like how you expect to be treated as a person the housing program there are events that they do like when they have people come and visit us like celebrities when they come to stop by to give us like words of wisdom or words of inspiration like that's really dope this housing program is amazing. I've been in quite a few before, and this is unlike any program I've ever been in. Um, they're taking care of us because they want to take care of us. And you can you can tell the difference. You can you can tell the difference when you're in other programs. And so I 
I'm just grateful to smile for being genuine and for being wholeheartedly there for, for all of the clients in this program. Hello, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and take my mask off for this portion. My name is Sharifa, and my pronouns are she, her. And I'm Sultan, and my pronouns are he, him. It was really great to hear from some of our housing participants, Sam and Harmony, about how much SMILE has been able to support them and how impactful the program has been. And so now is the point in the program where we ask everyone who has joined us today to make a meaningful contribution. Sharifa, how do people do that? If you are already on our One Cause platform, you just click the link and click Donate Now. If you have not downloaded that, text SMILE, S-M-Y-A-L, to 243725. You can see this on your screen. Once you text that, you'll get a link, and you click the link and click Donate Now. And so first, I want to thank people who have already donated. If you donate, you'll see your name come up here. Thank you, Paige, for your donation, and thank you to everyone who's donated so far. But if you haven't donated yet, I want to let you know what your donations go to. So at the $1,000 and up level, whether it's $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, first off, you join the major donor club. And as um, Rob mentioned earlier, it's one of the leadership circles in the organization that really helps us do the impactful programming that we do. But also, you heard from the Youth Leadership Awardees earlier. These are young people who are really making a difference in the community. And I was pretty gay growing up in high school, but <laughs> like, I, I know, I know, Ooh. pretty gay. <laughs> but like, the thing about it is like, I could never imagine being an out gay person, really like being at the forefront of some of the movements, just being proud and really saying like, what is it that I'm going to do to make my school safer, to make my community more powerful, saying, look, I'm gonna get in front of the Black Lives Matter movement and really support people. The work that the Youth Leadership Awardees are doing is incredibly impactful, and that's what $1,000 and up goes to. Thank you, Billy Wise. Yeah, I couldn't be any more inspired by the Youth Leadership Award winners and also the other youth participating in our programs. You know, we only had so much time to share youth voices with you today, but we've heard so much from them, including from a youth named Sanja, who participated in Rise Up, which was our virtual activist camp for this year. And she said that conference really, really sparked her and moved her activism forward. She had been feeling stuck and attending that conference and learning so much about transformative justice and racial justice and tools really made her hit the ground running to do work in her community. Yeah. And so that's why I want to thank Ben, thank Richard, thank all of the people who are donating right now. Will and Brian, thank you so much. If you can't give at the $1,000 or the $5,000 level, or you're looking to give higher or lower, I'll tell you about what $750 does. So that's the typical amount that we've given out through the COVID relief fund, which we launched earlier this year when we really started to realize the devastating impact COVID would have on really the entire world, but particularly on queer and trans young people. So $750 is the typical amount that we gave out. And thanks to the generous support of the Greater Washington Community Foundation who helped us launch the fund and because of donors like you, we were able to give out over $77,000 to young people in need. And that went to everything from someone who got laid off or furloughed and needed to pay their rent, someone who needed to buy groceries and couldn't afford it anymore, someone who was having to come back from school because their dorm got shut down and their only alternative was to go back to an unsupportive household. The money that we were able to provide from the COVID relief fund went 100% to young people in need, and that's what $750 does. To Laura Frere uh, and Roger White. Uh, you know, I like to say that you should give what you can when you can. And if $1,000 is too much or $750 is too much, any gift matters. Uh, you know, something as little as $25 can make a big impact. Uh, $25 can help a youth in our housing program get transportation to and from their jobs. Uh, something like $50 helps us provide art supplies, materials, and books to our Little Smiles participants so that they have everything they need when they're at home to participate in their virtual sessions. Yeah, and, and so, so thank, thank you, you Devon, Devon, who's one of our brunch co-chairs. We really appreciate it. And to everyone who's continuing to donate, I'll tell you about what $500 gives. So $500 allows our case managers and our housing program to not only provide supplies, but also programming, but really, most importantly, it allows the program to provide care and support. And as you just heard about in the video about housing, 
you can really tell when a program is there to fully support you. And as the executive director, I can tell you if you donate today or really any time that your donation is going to go to ensuring that SMILE is providing the best support for queer and trans young people in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. So thank you for your support. Yes, thank you, Kelly Max. Thank you, Mark Dan. Uh, you know, something like $100 is also very useful. $100 provides technology for a month for our programs team, whether that's our new Zoom subscription, Discord, Twitch, Slack, all these different methods that we're communicating with the youth. Uh, you know, we're meeting them where they are, we're being accessible, and we're communicating in the ways that they want to communicate. $100 helps support that. And so I also want to thank our presenting sponsor, Facebook, one more time for all of your support. This is the third year in a row that they've been our presenting sponsor. I also want to thank our gold sponsors, Neil Starkey and Rob Cogorno and Jeff Nelson, and all of our sponsors who you can see scrolling on the screen here. We also have some amazing brunch ambassadors who set really ambitious goals. A lot of people said, look, I'm not sure how much I can raise this year. The brunch is virtual, but I'll do my best. And thank you so much to Daniel Pinchina, Laura Freyer, Gary Duke, Jeff Miskovich, Milla Sains, Devon Trotter, the Smile Allies, and all of our brunch ambassadors. Yeah, uh, we have some really great auction items available for folks. Uh, I hope now that you have already texted 243-725, and um, you can see that we have virtual experiences with Ari Shapiro, Judith Light, and Alan Cumming. We also have cooking classes and floral arranging classes with Jocko, with Jocko Made. Great, so if you don't mind grabbing the glasses, Sharifa. So on behalf of the SMILE board and myself as the executive director, first I wanna say thank you to Sharifa and all the amazing staff of the organization. I wanna say thank you to all of our sponsors. Thank you to all of our volunteers. I wanna say thank you to you for joining us today. I wanna to thank our brunch ambassadors who used to be table leaders when we were in person, but now are really working to help virtually support. And I wanna thank particularly the amazing youth. It's so important for young people to tell their stories and for people to really know the impact that the organization is making and more importantly, the impact that your donation is making. So with that, I'd like to give a toast. It wouldn't be the brunch without a toast. So cheers to everybody. Cheers. And with that, I'll turn it over to the amazing Harmony Giovanni. Cheers. Hello, everyone. This is Harmony again, and I wanted to do a quick wardrobe change as we have some important business to discuss. Thank you for supporting SMILE and its work. Now it's my privilege to introduce a special guest. I got to meet him when he visited SMILE back in January. At Apple, he's a leader on behalf of queer and transgender people on staff. But I was impressed to hear him speak about economic obstacles to housing, careers, and opportunities that exists for our community more broadly, as well as the work Apple is doing and supporting to build a better future. Maybe more important than what he said was how he listened to us and to our lives. To me, that means a lot. And so it's my pleasure to introduce a message from Apple CEO, Tim Cook. Thank you, Harmony, for the introduction. Hello again to the Smile family. I'm really grateful for this award, but I'm more grateful still to get to play a part in your important work to support LGBTQ young people especially black, non-binary, and trans young women like Harmony. I won't soon forget my visit to DC in January when I met with some of the thoughtful, talented, and hopeful advocates who make SMILE's program so vibrant. In fact, it was one of the last trips I got to make. I couldn't have asked for a better memory to hold on to during these tough times. This year has reminded us how much we all depend on one another for our health, for our well being, and for our future. It's a powerful illustration of how we can't look at progress in one area for one group and use that as an excuse to overlook how others still need support. For LGBTQ young people, especially those of color, progress isn't worth much unless it reaches everybody. This is a topic that I take really personally. 
Growing up when I did in Alabama during the Civil Rights Movement, I feel a great responsibility to be visible, to speak out, and to use privileges I had in my own life to help make things better for those who come after me. At Apple, that starts with an inclusive workspace and a commitment to representing the communities we serve. But it doesn't stop there. This year, we grew that effort even further with a $100 million commitment to Apple's racial equity and justice initiative. There is more great work to come, and we need renewed leadership across our society to tear down the systemic obstacles to justice that persist. Fortunately, there are organizations like SMILE and young advocates and organizers like those I met in January. You give us all hope, and the inclusive future we need depends on supporting the important work you do every day. Thank you for your efforts, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, Tim, so much for joining us, and congratulations on your award. We really are so grateful for the impact that you have as the world's most prominent out business leader. We're also grateful to all of our other speakers today, especially the Smile Youth who participate in our programs. And finally, I wanna thank all of you for joining us today for our brunch and encourage you to still place your bids on all the great auction items that are available. As a reminder, uh, the auction is gonna close at 5 p.m. tomorrow. If you didn't make a donation yet, please do so right now to ensure that LGBT youth have the resources that they need to thrive. I hope that you have a wonderful remainder of the weekend and we hope to see you again with SMILE.